there's a new thing going around about oppression and whatnot, and that is the debut of a rom-com movie. The difference being that this rom-com, romantic comedy, is homosexual. It's a romantic comedy about a homosexual relationship. And it did very poorly in the box office. And when it did poorly, homophobia was to blame. And that the people who didn't see this movie were bad people. Because they didn't want to see them because they were gay. It's here that we come to the limits of liberal critique. Liberalism is angry because people didn't want to consume a form of media. What's the alternative? Force them to consume it? Their idea is that if you don't watch this movie, you don't like this movie, then you're homophobic. Of course, this completely undermines the fact that there could be any number of reasons someone doesn't see the movie. They can't really afford to go to the movie, so when they can afford, they're going to go to something they really, really, really want to watch. Or maybe there's someone like me that it's extremely rare, like once every six months they go to the movies. The last movie I saw was The Matrix Part 4, because that was the only one I really wanted to see. Here's the problem. Homophobia isn't defeated by forcing people to watch gay media, or quote-unquote gay media. Let's be honest, this is corporate media. This is a corporation trying to make money by selling you a story and you buying tickets to see it. This isn't the same thing as gay art, like painting a homosexual picture, whatever that's supposed to be, and exhibiting it to the public. This is a corporation trying to make money. And, like I said, as a member of the LGBT community, corporate America does not speak for me. Especially not a movie studio, and especially not one that's going to use a lot of gay tropes and present a false image of how homosexuality is. This is that limit to liberal critique. We want to fight homosexuality fight homophobia, so we're going to put out media, and then when you don't consume it, you're being oppressive. Well, there's a very big difference between people not wanting to watch a movie, which they have every right to, even if, even if they are homophobic. They still have a right not to watch the movie. What they're trying to do is compare this to being denied service at a restaurant. You remember the old stuff from the 60s, the footage where black people would go into a you know, quote-unquote whites-only establishment and sit down and refuse to leave. These things are not the same. Being ref denied a service is not the same thing as refusing to consume some kind of media. If you had a business establishment that said, no gay people are allowed, or, you know, homosexuals who enter this place will be subject to violence, that's a form of oppression. Because that's denying a service to an individual. This is not the same thing as not wanting to consume a piece of media. I don't want to watch the media because I know it's going to stereotype us. It's going to make us look like fools. It's going to make us look like caricatures. And I find that insulting. Am I homophobic now? Because I don't want to consume that I'm generally I generally don't care about romantic comedies in general am I being oppressive towards heterosexuals by not wanting to watch it I've had a girlfriend or two that basically forced me to watch some but that, that doesn't count here's the thing the liberal notion cannot distinguish between personal slight and systematic repression. Which is also why they suck so bad at eliminating systemic oppression. Denying someone access to a service, something that they need, something that is required, you know, uh, something somewhat along like 
the the whole gay cake situation from a couple of years ago. I'm still a bit iffy on that. But a wedding hall that refuses to rent to a gay couple based on the fact that they are gay is a form of oppression. And it undermines the rights of homosexuals to have their own marriage union. Because as I, I, as you frequently need to remind people, the Bible didn't invent marriage, nor is it the ultimate authority on what marriage is. And in fact, marriage existed before the Bible did. And gay marriage existed before the Bible did. But I digress. Whining about people not wanting to see your movie, which, I'm, honestly, it looks like it sucks to me. I haven't watched it, but it kind of looks like it sucks. And I don't like romantic comedies anyway, and I don't like stereotyping gays anyway, which actually stereotyping us and trying to make us look like buffoons and outrageous caricatures kind of is an act of oppression in and of itself. What's important here is to note that liberals don't have the answer. They don't even understand the question. So we can't look to them for answers. Look at how much they've decided to be a part of the what we what we what we call woke culture forcing gay media doesn't solve homophobia simply adding in making you know changing characters in whatever thing to become people of color okay that's a positive step but that doesn't fight racism that's not what systemic racism is and then you get an angry backlash from idiots because of it. Deal with the cops killing people. Deal with economic inequality. Deal with these things and you will begin to fight systemic oppression. Making stupid cosmetic changes like a gay movie and making and forcing characters to become black isn't going to do that. It's a positive thing I agree, but it's not going to solve the problem, and the problem is the structure of the system itself. And that is what liberals don't want to do. They don't want to end economic inequality because that it would end un undermine their own economic interest. Remember, every single white celebrity that screams about things being economically fair will fight to the death to make sure none of their wealth is confiscated. And the same goddamn thing is true of every black rich celebrity. They'll do the exact same thing. You could put, you could put, you could put every goddamn CEO in America, make them all black, and the fucking problem would still remain. Because it's part of a system of inequality itself, and you are not going to solve it by continuing a system of inequality. And the best that they can muster is to whine because you didn't like their movie or you didn't go to see their movie. Sorry, but your half-assed liberal attempt at trying to create equality, or really you're just trying to get money out of me, you don't actually care about gay people, because if you did, you would take real steps instead of just creating shitty Hollywood media isn't going to solve anything. And being a whiny little shit because I didn't like your movie or I didn't see your movie because I'm not even interested in those kinds of movies and then calling me a homophobe isn't going to solve anything. The takeaway from this, capitalism doesn't have any answers. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.